So I am, as Vita said, I'm Stephanie Shanikan, um, the Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities. I, I pause there because I used to say the new Dean, but I've been, I'm, I'm into my second semester, so I'm, I'm gonna stop saying new. Um, I'm particularly excited as when I arrived on campus, I heard so many wonderful stories about access to alumni. I've been looking forward to this event for a long time. It is my distinct pleasure to watch this event unfold and to see the many ways our alumni can help our students. Um, as Vida said, we had an incredible session yesterday. I'm, I'm still buzzing from it. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to see how, how this version of access to, to alumni unfolds as well. Um, access to alumni is designated to give our students an opportunity to connect with successful RHU alumni to discuss their career goals and uncertainties. It's an opportunity for a meaningful exchange of information across the shared experience of studying in McKeldin Library, rooting for the Terps athletic teams, eating in the dining halls, hanging out with friends on the mall, which there are lots of students out on the mall right now because it's such a beautiful day. Um, our alumni can can certainly remember those those um, those wonderful times as as Terps. Um, access to to alumni has become even more critical at this time. It's a time when we urgently need to push back against the national narratives about the arts and humanities and to illuminate the diverse career opportunities across various industries that are available for our arts and humanities majors. Students, my best advice um, is to is to talk. You know, good things happen when good people talk. All of our alumni, regardless of industry or title, have great insights and advice to offer. They are excited to talk to you and help you be successful. All of our alumni participants were once in your shoes, so please know that you are in good and welcoming company. To our alumni, I cannot thank you enough. Um, I'm so blown away by by your 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 contribution back to your to your college um, in in so many ways, but certainly th this is one of one of the big ways. We're so proud of your many accomplishments. Thank you for volunteering your time as well as supporting the college through your donations. And we and I, and we felt you um, during Giving Day and and all and every day. You're the best ambassadors for, for Maryland and the arts and humanities in particular. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, now we're gonna turn over to our keynote presentation. Um, I'm very, very excited about this because I'm an ethnomusicologist. I study music, I study popular music, um, and I'm all about looking and thinking about how music is important to who we are, and, and how we've evolved as, as we have as a society. You'll understand why I'm excited in a minute. Jared Paul is our keynote speaker. He was a, a major in our theater, dance and performance studies um, school here at the University of Maryland. Jared spent a good amount of his time at Maryland involved as a student leader with C Productions. His first concert was a sold out show in the student union by the ska punk band, the Mighty Mighty Bostones. Perhaps some of you attended the big time rush show earlier this semester. Jared is their manager. So you likely saw him on stage at one point or the other. Jared also manages New Kids on the Block and former Glee star, Liam Michelle. In addition, he produced the touring productions of So You Think You Can Dance and Dancing with the Stars. I mean, I'm such I'm such a fan. This is all this is all um, incredible work that 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 Jared is, is doing. After graduating from Maryland, Jared joined the events team at Capital One Arena and quickly became the director of entertainment, booking all concerts and special events at the 20,000 seat venue. He then moved to California to pursue his passion for the music industry. Jared worked with the likes of Christina Aguilera and Journey before striking out on his own in 2015. And he now runs his own company called Faculty Management and Productions. 
which I feel close to because I feel like I'm managing faculty every day. Um, but um, faculty management and, and productions is, is Jared's um, company, along with um, another entity called Assembly Room Studios, which is a production rehearsal facility. Jared Paul has a long list of distinctions and accomplishments. As such, it is my pleasure to, pre to present him with the Distinguished Terrapin Award. This award is our Hughes way of recognizing the outstanding contributions of our alumni. And Jared is certainly well-deserving of this honor. He has a deep passion and dedication to the music industry and believes in the power of music to inspire us all. He is a strong and dedicated ambassador for the University of Maryland. Since this is an online event, unfortunately, I am unable to present Jared with this award in person, but I look forward to a, a, a time when I can, I can do that. Um, we will, of course, make sure that he gets the award um, very, very soon. Congratulations, Jared. Um, it is my pleasure to invite Jared Paul to now share his thoughts and insights. Um, and so please welcome, welcome Jared Paul to the stage. Thank you. Wow, thank you. I had no idea there was an, an award coming my way. That's extremely uh, kind of you. Thank you for your kind words and that amazing uh, introduction and, and the honor. Um, I, mean, I guess before I start uh, what I prepared, um, and you did a great job explaining a little bit of my of my backstory. Um, and I'll share a bit more in detail, but you know, University of Maryland is absolutely near and dear to my heart. Um, I I'm one of um, many people in my family who attended uh, College Park. My uh, literally my entire immediate family, my mom, dad, sister, and myself all attended. And um, it's just always where I wanted to be. And there's absolutely no question that I wouldn't be where I am today without everything that I accomplished and all the growing that I did there. So it's just really special to be with with everyone here. And, and I, I the entire purpose and seems like charter of this event and this this organization is to harness the experiences of alumni to support um, all the students that are currently on campus. But you know, I, I just one of the things I'm most proud of is that I was able to be supported by the faculty and by my fellow students. And I, I just absolutely feel like um, everything I was able to get my hands involved in on campus is what led me to where I am today. So uh, I'll share a lot more in detail, but uh, thank you so much. And um, and yes, as, as you touched upon, one of the most special moments was being able recently uh, to bring one of my clients back on campus to perform in the very room that I that I was able to produce my first ever concert in. So it was a it was a definitely a full circle moment and not one that was lost on me and one that was really, really fun to share with all the students that were there. Um, so um, I I definitely like to look at my life in, in retrospect and piece together the key moments that I feel played a role in where I am today in the relationships I cherish, as well as the goals I've been able to accomplish on my journey. I hope that by sharing some of these moments and the actions that I've taken, that you'll be able to, if you choose to put them into your use in your own lives, to build personal bridges and to succeed in meeting your own goals. Like I just said, I can definitely attribute so much of my success to my earliest days on campus at University of Maryland College Park. I came into being a Terp knowing that I wanted to somehow pursue a career in the entertainment business, and I specifically was gravitating towards music. I'd grown up in nearby Montgomery County, Maryland, where I know uh, Greg Schofer from, actually, and uh, I'd spent uh, many of my high school years making a name of my, for myself, or a small name for myself, as a local DJ for private parties. Long before being a DJ was cool and they were giving out Vegas residencies, more like bar mitzvahs and homecomings and proms. But it was my first portal into any sort of entertainment business. Um, I knew from my research before I entered school that Maryland had a student board who worked with the real big name artists, comedians and speakers, and they are called C Productions. Um, and that's what they were called at the time. My dream while I was in high school had been to find a way to work on the concerts that I loved going to growing up. And I felt getting into that organization, University of Maryland College Park, was my chance. I really don't think I'd been on campus as a freshman back in the fall of 1995 for a matter of days before I found my way into the student union and to the offices of C Productions. I remember 
vividly knocking on the door of Donna Lim, the then C student advisor who is still still in the administration on campus, and telling her of my hopes of joining C Productions to support their efforts and to get to work on their real life concerts. Donna couldn't have been more supportive. She was still new at the job herself and helped me find my way to the first meeting of the year for C. That was the moment it really all changed for me. And I was making the leap to get to find a way into the business that nearly 30 years later, I would find my home and career in. My time at C led me to meet so many people, learn so many things, and most importantly, get into working hands-on with live events on campus. During my time on campus, while serving eventually as concert director and later as president, we produced shows from a wide range of legendary talents, such as Run DMC, Outkast, Joni Mitchell, Bob Dylan, the, Fu the Fugees, Dave Chappelle, John Stewart, Maya Angelou, and truly too many to mention on the Zoom. I did get a picture from Dave Chappelle the night he played, which he signed it, thank you for wanting this. That's how unfamous he was at the time, which is kind of exciting. These are the moments looking back that really outlined for me two key learnings that are the first of while well, basic, but key things I applied to achieve my goals and build my bridges that I'd love to talk to you about today knocking on every door and making every outgoing call, whether you're scared to or not. I never would have been where I am today had I not been motivated to seek out University of Maryland College Park and everything it had to offer, and specifically the organization that I knew that would be a way into my goals for myself. The days I spent in that office between classes, working up the courage to call agents, promoters, and all talent reps to convince them that they should let us present their talent, taught me to not be afraid of being, telling, being told no. Get on the phone and plead your case. I do this now every single day for a living. Had I left, not left C Productions in University of Maryland with these positive experiences and small successes, I know I would not be where I am. A funny side note, I did once pitch an agent that he should let me present his act in the student union because it was the home to the world's largest Roy Rogers, which I'm told is not Roy Rogers anymore, but at the time, that's what it was. I also met my wife because she officed right across the hall from C Productions. In my senior year at University of Maryland, after a successful couple year internship at what is now called Live Nation, but it was then the local DC office of Cellar Door Concerts, I was able to acquire a part-time job in the brand new state-of-the-art MCI center, now Capital One Arena, home to the Capitals, Wizards, and many other concerts. I worked in the booking department responsible for booking all the events outside the sports team schedules, putting the skills I'd been learning on campus to use in the real life entertainment business. And I got that job because of the job I had on campus as a volunteer producing concerts. When school ended due to a turn of events and an amazing boost of support that came my way from a mentor who was retiring as, as the head of booking, I was given the job to book the arena when I was 22 years old. I was able to use this newfound position and this amazing trust put in me by the organization to build more bridges, make more outgoing calls, and dream up some pretty epic stuff for this world-class venue. After five years had passed, I was really loving life at the arena, but looking to challenge myself in other ways. This is when I applied the next lesson that for sure changed my life. We were hosting a weekend Eagles concert in the summer of 2003 when I learned that their longtime and very famous Uber manager would be with them in the venue, Irving Azoff. I stood in the same hallway, seeing him a bit down the hall as he was chatting with someone else. The person I was speaking to at the time told me they'd never even gone up and said hello to him. I'd read every single book that talked about Irving and his peers. They essentially were the people that built the building blocks of our industry in the 1970s, people like Elliot Roberts and David Geffen. I decided I wasn't going to let the stories I heard, the nicknames he'd earned about being a small but mean pit bull scare me off. I walked up and shook his hand and greeted him and, and told him what an honor it was to have him in the building. I somehow in the moment managed to recall a story I'd read about him in a book, the famous a book about David Geffen, the operator, and I was able to engage in a conversation that lasted well over an hour over the course of the evening. Irving later paid me a compliment to a mutual friend who was nice enough to pass it on to me. I picked up the phone within a week and I called Irving Azoff and he actually picked up the phone. I told him I had aspired, I was aspiring to work in a different industry or a different part of our industry as an artist manager and leave the venue business. And then I was looking for new challenges, excuse me. 
he said, if I was really serious, I needed to be prepared to move to LA and be ready for a career that involved travel. This keep in mind is at a time that every, like I mentioned, everyone in my family had gone to Maryland and no one had ever left the state of Maryland to start a career. I was the first in my family. I called my wife at the time who was teaching, having just also graduated from University of Maryland. And she, believe it or not, was extremely supportive and up for the challenge. We flew out to LA to meet with Irving. And by December of that year, I was working as a manager at Azoff Music. I can 100% assure you that I had not shaken his hand. My life would have taken a different direction. When in doubt, find the courage and shake that hand. Not so long into my amazing time working for Irving as a manager and supporting him while building my own book of business, I learned another important lesson and skill that I imagine plays a large role in why Irving Azoff and people like him are so successful. Irving is relentless about getting back to people. If you call, email, or text him, unless it's spam, he or someone in his organization will get back to you. It was by applying this very practice that I changed my life, and I began a journey that has once again changed my career and my life for the better. One day, about 18 years ago, Joey McIntyre of New Kids on the Block fame reached out to Irving Azoff to request a meeting. Irving asked me to return the call, and I happily obliged, having grown up with the new kids and having a lot of respect for their success and Joe's success on Broadway and with his solo career on the T in the TRL days. Joe and I agreed to meet up, and we started what became a very strong friendship that led to a professional relationship. I later would go on to produce the Dancing with the Stars tour after Joe appeared in its debut season on TV and a tour for Dancing with the Stars that Joe starred in as well. This time together led to lots of long talks with Joe and the, de and the details he confided to me that his bandmates, who had been on a 15-year hiatus at the time, were finally engaged in some business decisions and discussions about one day thinking about reuniting. I definitely practically begged him for my chance to be considered for managing the band. That was in 2007, and dreams did come true because in 2008, the Nukas in the Block did surprise the world with me as their manager and a full reunion that went on to sell 200 arenas out around the world, keeping in mind that when I first put them back together, everyone thought I was crazy and I could only book seven concerts, which all sold out. The band just celebrated their 15-year anniversary of being back together. They've actually been together now as the second time around longer than the first time. They've put out lots of albums, sold out Fenway Park, their beloved hometown stadium, three times, done 12 sold-out New Kids cruises. They have their own first-ever fan convention coming up Memorial Day weekend of this year, and they've made so many blockheads around the world very happy. Couldn't be prouder to be their manager, and I can assure you I would not be on the Zoom talking to you about them if I hadn't learned from the best. You return every phone call. The music business and many businesses, for that matter, are a what have you done for me today kind of industry. The people in it are ready to dispose of people and projects if they do not see the value and talent staring them in the face in that moment. That return call changed everything. You truly never know what may come of it. So I'll wrap this up with these not complex but important learnings I've applied to my life and to my career, some of the most definitive reasons I've built important relationships and achieved my personal goals. Knock on every door, shake every hand, and return every call. Thank you. Thanks for having me today.